everyone. Welcome, welcome. I see people coming in. Nice to see some names from the last time as well. Welcome. Excellent. Okay, it is 4 p.m. Good afternoon and welcome everybody to Bada Wars and Malaysia's second talk series of the year. Today we are going to be talking about preserving our culinary heritage, focusing specifically on herbal teas. We'll be joined by Professor Dr. Shahrim Abdul Karim, who will be giving excellent presentation quite soon. My name is Delima Muhammad Khaled. I will be your moderator for today. Just before we get started and we let a few more people come into the room, uh, we're going to watch a quick Banaway Samanisha video. Take it away. Once again, hi everyone and welcome to Banawai San Malaysia's second talk series of the year, Preserving Our Culinary Heritage. I am Delima Mohamed Khalid and I will be the moderator for today. We are joined by Professor Dr. Shahim Abdul Karim, who has done so very many things and he had joined us last week, uh, no sorry, last month uh, to do a talk on Nasi Ulam in particular. So a little bit about uh, Professor Dr. Sharim Abdul Karim. He is a professor of Malaysian heritage, food and culture at University of Putra, Malaysia. He has served on various national committees on food heritage, and he's also worked on refining the documentation of our national foods. He has hosted cooking shows, both locally and abroad. He has published no less than six cookbooks. And he also loves traveling for food and food photography. We'll be seeing some, once again, some very, very lovely photos that he's taken uh, and he'll be showing it through his presentation very soon. So just to kick us off today a little bit, Professor Dr. Sharim, welcome. And thank you once again for joining us. Thank you. I just wanted to ask, um, we're talking about herbal teas today. What was your favorite, what is your personal favorite herbal tea and what did you drink as you were growing up? Well, you know, Delima, I've been drinking a lot of this herbal tea made from different types of spices, flowers and fruits, in the dry fruits. But of course, the one that I like is the one that I commonly drink, uh, the lemongrass and pandan uh, tea, which is very refreshing. And I feel so good drinking this uh, tea. Plus, it, you know, it has tons of benefits. Yes, Aiserai is uh, very close to my heart in particular. It was something I, I drank growing up, uh, growing up very much. Um, okay, thank you for that, Professor Dr. Sharim. I'm really looking forward to you know, going through uh, all the different herbal teas that you'll be talking about today. For the audience, thank you so much for joining us. Please do share your comments, your thoughts, any ideas in the chat as Professor Dr. Sharim is presenting. And if you have any questions in particular for him to address later on, please put it in the Q&A box. You can also put it in the chat. I might miss it, so you know, please do repeat it again if, if you need to. We will be addressing the Q&A right after the cooking dem uh, video demonstration after. With that, Professor Dr. Sharim, over to you. Thank you, Delima. Very good afternoon and assalamu alaikum. And thank you for being here this afternoon and to be with us at the Badan Warisan Malaysia in our second uh, talk series uh, today. 
and today I'll be talking about herbal tea. Just want to let you know, my presentation is going to be very brief. And this presentation is not similar, it's not so similar with the demonstration. So there are different information that you will that you will get through this uh, presentation. So why herbal tea? Well, herbal tea is that something can be consumed every day and all year round, no matter when or where you can have herbal tea, you see. And it is a delicious beverages that can be consumed at any temperature. You can have it cold, you can have it warm, or you can have it hot as well. Uh, then the benefits of this tea depends on the type of tea that you drink, you see. And herbal tea is derived from, as I said just now, from varieties of flowers, spices. You can have spices, herbs, and fruits. You can have fresh herbs, fresh fruits. And uh, those are the main ingredients, you see. And also herbal tea would have a variety of flavors and options for taste and health benefits. Next. Okay, these are some of the beliefs and benefits of herbal tea, you see. And a lot of people are saying that it is for relaxation, will make you calm and reduce stress, pain reduction, improvement of bodily functions, digestive and immune system. Also, it would, you know, it has this anti-cancer effects, reduce type two diabetic, uh, high antioxidant, eliminate free radicals, and most importantly, detoxification. Also, some herbs and flowers and spices aid in sleep, you know, help you to sleep if you have hard time to sleep at night. So drink some kind of tea that will make you to sleep. Next. And specific benefits help to unwind, boost your immune system, reduce pain and soreness, prevent chronic diseases, improve digestive system, stimulate brain functions. And I will share about this. Pay particular attention on stimulating your brain functions. It, it has to do something with your increasing or improving your cognitive level and also calorie free. And you know, taking herbal tea is not taking like those sugary drink of beverages. It's natural, it's pure. And you can drink it as much as you like and practice it, you know, like a few times a week. That would be good to detox your body. Next. So why you should why should you start soonest? Yeah, because this is a natural remedy, you see. Sometimes, you know, when you you are you get sick, your grandma or your mother will just ask you to boil some kind of a tea and drink it, or just drink coconut water would help as well, you see. And these uh, spices or herbs, they're not costly at all, and especially the fresh herbs that you can get from your garden. It's free out there, you see. You just pick and then you just boil them up and then you get a tea already. And also the preparation, just very simple. Just a few minutes, you can get a nice herbal tea, you see, with a different mix of spices or herbs or flowers or fruits, you see. And also practice, it has been practiced for generations, you know what I mean? But then, of course, you have to know what kind of uh, uh, leaves or spices that are familiar to you, that you have the knowledge and experience of using all these herbs and spices that, you know what I mean, that is uh, typically used in our culture here in, in Malaysia or in, or in Asia, because, you know, each country, for example, in Asia, Malaysia and Indonesia, and Indonesia also has widespread of types of herbs and spices, you see, and maybe their spices and our spices, there are some similarity and differences, you see, because of the different, uh, well, the different uh, places, you see, we can grow different things in certain part of, uh, of, the, of these uh, places. Anyway, next. Okay, first I'm going to start with frangipani. You will be surprised why frangipani. Have you tried to drink uh, frangipani tea or 
eating frangipani freshly. Yes, it can be eaten, you see. So basically, frangipani is symbol of grace, wealth, and perfection. And this is, the, you know, how frangipani is believed in Asia, you see. And, and, and also, you know, frangipani in Thailand, this frangipani can be eaten uh, fresh. They would eat fresh or they would just fry it with uh, flour in a batter and then they fry it and it make it a crispy uh, appetizers. And then you dip it with its sauce or something like that. And also, uh, it can be made into tea when it is fresh and also when in a, in a dry form, you see. But then you pick those frangipani that is already dropped on the ground. You don't pick the frangipani because it has the sap in it, you see. But then if it's dropped on the ground, then it's, it's, it's better, you see. And you just pick and you can take a bunch of it and make it into tea or you can dry them as well. Okay, next. Okay, this is the colored frangipani. Somebody asking about the colored frangipani. This is the burgundy, the, the, the dark red frangipani that I have dried them. I pick them and I dry them and I make them into tea as well. So you can, you can have teas from different types of frangipanis. And to tell you, you know, the, the tea that you have would be some kind of like, you know, when you smell the flower, that's this, the, you know, that's the aroma of the tea that you would have. And, uh, you know, it is good for, just now in my slides, previous slides, I forgot to mention, it's good for your stomach, for your joints, and also for your nerves, if you practice drinking frangipani tea. Next. Okay, this is the tea that I brewed with burgundy plumeria. You know, frangipani is the white one is frangipani, but the rest is plumeria. So that's what I want to, uh, to tell you all, you see, because you don't say all these flowers are frangipani. They are not. The, only the white ones that I show on the first slide, earlier slides, is frangipani. And the colored ones is plumeria. It's not frangipani. But then this tea I brewed, burgundy plumeria, the dry ones. I put fresh frangipani and also lemon leaves. Uh, so it was a nice tea that I had in one of those morning that I, you know, I prepared the slides and I prepared this tea and I drank them. It's so super nice tea because with the, you know, the fragrance of frangipanis, the fresh and the dry, and also the lemon leaves as well. So gives a nice combination there. Next. Okay, this is the frangipani that I, I brewed, you see, using, uh, using fresh frangipani and you see the the, the 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 tea is kind of like light you can see like a yellow you know you like kind of like a tea you know light tea color you see yellowish very light yellow color and it's just nice fragrant as well next okay this is tea from curry leaves you can make tea from curry leaves and it is good for high blood pressure for diabetic, uh, for different illnesses, but it is good to be practiced. And also you can take this as ulam as well, as I mentioned in my previous uh, lectures. Next. And also I brewed coffee lime leaves. You can brew them fresh as well as dry as well. Just pour hot water to it and then you wait for two, three minutes and you can get a nice flavor of uh, coffee lime leaves. Tea. Next. And Misai Kucheng or Arthrosipon, Aristatus. And for Misai Kucheng, you know, there are so many products. There's so many products uh, in the market. And it has been established for 30 over years. And there are many types of tea from Misai Kucheng. And of course, Misai Kucheng is good for diabetic and high blood pressure. Uh, many other uh, diseases, then it's good to be practiced. But this one, I just take the fresh mesenchymal chain that I pick from my garden and just uh, pour this hot water and for me to drink. And on the side is the flower as well. You can add a flower if you like, you see, for this mesenchymal chain tea. Next. Okay, I will be making butterfly pea. This is similar to what I'm going to present, but I just want to highlight, you see, 
I just want to highlight, I just, I'm using the fresh one, this one, the one that my demos, I'm using the dry ones. But this one, you see, look at the color and this, how pretty it is. But this is the uh, butterfly field, bunga talang with one petal, you see. And bunga talang, for information, I've been mentioning this, and there's a lot of anti-aging properties. And I just talked to someone like two weeks ago, and he said, uh, bunga talang tea or bunga talang basically can increase increase your cognitive level so it helps in your you know brain functions like that uh well there's no clinical uh, evidence but it is uh belief that it would help your cognitive level but then you know some scientists got to go into the lab and check it out the you know this uh this claim, you see, but you know we can practice it. But anti-aging properties is good for us to practice it in our daily life. You see. Next, okay, this is calamansi. Calamansi has a lot of uh, properties as well, good properties, especially in boosting immune system, aid in weight loss, detoxifying the body, and also lowering cholesterol. And it has very high in vitamin. I think you know the vitamin C is higher than tomatoes, so very very high vitamin C, and it helps your you know your tummy or your the pH balancing the pH in your stomach. Next, and brewing. I'm also brewed. I brew also turmeric powder tea, and of course we have a lot of you have known the goodness or the benefits of this. Uh, Kakuma, you see, or turmeric powder. You can fresh, you can use a fresh one as well, but this one I'm using the powdered, uh, powdered uh, turmeric. Of course, one of the uh, benefits of this kakuma, of course, is it has this anti cancer properties and also anti aging, you see. So, you, it's, you know, well, the women in our culture use a lot of. Uh, Kakuma or turmeric when you know after in during uh after you know after giving birth, you see. And next calamansi. Yeah, this is calamansi. I just want to highlight it again. Uh it's superfood, you see. And superfood is uh many type of let's say fruits and uh, vegetables herbs and spices are super food, you know, that we don't realize, it. you know, there's those things that you can find in your garden, they are super food, you see, and it would rejuvenate skin cells, uh, balancing acidity levels in your stomach, I mentioned earlier, fight, fight inflammations, it's in collagen production, high in vitamin C, calcium and potassium as well, and it would reduce mucus, and regulates glucose, insulin, and cholesterol levels. So it has a lot of benefits. So start taking calamansi fruit, you see. It's our local fruit and it's out there. You just can pick it in the wet market. And just, you know, like you cut it to remove the seed and then uh, press the juice and pour warm water or cold water and then you drink it every morning, which is good. Next. <clears throat> This is our local lemon here, limau telubwaya, as we call it. And it's like similar like the lemon, the lemon that we import. I just want to show this, our local lemon. And, you know, look at the colors, so pretty. And, of course, lemon is good as well. Next. This is our imported lemon from mainly, or lemon now is from Turkey or South Africa. And that's, the, you know, the lemon that we have at the moment. And... Uh, Balancing pH in your stomach as well, weight control, mood boostings. You know, lemon will, if you take lemon juice, will make you happy. If you're not, you don't feel, you know, if you feel miserable or and, and not at ease or something, just take lemon, lemon water. It's, and also it has anti cancer properties. And next, yeah, this is, you know, the kantan that I mentioned last time from our backyard. And I do boil kantan. Uh, kantan tea, you see, with pandan and uh, the different colors of this uh, kantan that we have, you see. I can, you know, dry them or I can use them fresh, you see. These are making laksa or to cook and you also can boil them for making uh, 
herbal tea, and it is high in potassium, uh, water and fiber, support blood sugar stability, reduce bad cholesterol, you see, and increasing good cholesterol. So, and also making your, you know, heart, healthy heart. So it's good. There's a lot of uh, uh, good properties in this uh, post ginger. And next. Okay, this is like, you know, I just pick several uh, uh, French pennies, you know, dry and fresh. And also I add this bunga uh, telang and kaffir lime leaves and also add some cardamom as well. So this is like sort of like one concoction of tea flavors of tea flowers and the lemon, you know, like kaffir lime leaves. And also I'm using this, the dry herbs, you see. So this is how I combine making my herbal tea. You know, you can have a different combinations of spices, dry spices, fresh herbs, flowers, and uh, different, you know, dry uh, fruit as well, like uh, roselle, you know, can be used, you know, can be added to your tea as well. And next, and look at this. So what is this flower? Can you guess? I can, can wait for a few seconds for you to guess. Can somebody guess what is this? If you have seen this before, if not, I'm going to reveal it in the next, in the next uh, slide. No, nobody couldn't guess this flower. Well, too bad. It's okay. Next. Well, this is Arabica coffee flower. That's the flower, and that's the leaf, and that's the coffee Arabica. And I also make tea from this uh, flower. You know, the fragrance is like jasmine, exactly like jasmine. You can use them fresh or you can dry them as well if you have coffee plant. And also I want to share with you, you also can boil the leaves of this coffee. You take like four or five uh, leaves and you boil them and then it will give you a lot of strength and a lot of stamina. Let's say you feel like tired or you don't feel good. So why don't you boil the tea and the coffee leaves would help. And this is what has been practiced, has been practiced in Indonesia. Yeah. And next, I think that's about it. Next, this, yeah, well, well, next we're going to see the uh, cooking demonstration video for the next, uh, you know, 25 minutes or half an hour or so. So please stay tuned and we'll start the video. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon and assalamualaikum. Welcome to our talk this afternoon, uh, preserving our culinary heritage. And then this afternoon, I'm going to make uh, several types of herbal tea. So using our local herbs, and of course, this tea is going to be very, very good and refreshing. And of course, it helps with your, you know, uh, with your bodily functions. So first, I'm going to make a tea from uh, pandan and uh, kantan or toast ginger, lemongrass, and also lime leaves. Uh, it's very easy, I'm just using these four herbs and again, these are all from my backyard, yeah? And I'm also using, for my tea, I typically don't use white sugar. I like to use rock sugar, I have white rock sugar, uh, round rock sugar, and this is uh, brown sugar, crystallized brown sugar, and also the brown sugar, the normal brown sugar. So. I'm going to cut the toast uh, ginger into just into two and drop it in the water like that and bring it to a boil. Actually, you can use the stem as well if you like. If you don't want to throw the stem, the stem also gives nice flavor to your tea and pandan leaves. 
in just cutting it into small pieces and throw it in the pot and then lime leaves I will put this later because I will put this in very last minute because then you know if you put it earlier and all the aroma all the properties you know the chemical properties will be gone by then you see so and then lemongrass I'm just going to chop it roughly here or you know you can just bruise them use a mortar and knock them out and then drop it in the water in the boiling water and then bring it to a boil you don't have to boil it for long you see as long as it's like boiling and then keep it boiling for two three minutes that's about it because you don't want to uh, remove all those you know goodness or the, the properties in the herbs especially you know in the lemongrass in the pandan in the kantan all that has a very highly uh, you know uh, what do you call this antioxidant and nutritional properties why i like to make this tea because of course first is the aroma and also the uh, it's good it's going to be very refreshing and also it's going to help you uh, let's say it will help you in uh, reducing your let's say reducing your cholesterol level and it is very high in uh, antioxidant you see so and this is just like everything from your backyard and throw it in the body water and it becomes a nice tea you see it's almost boiling already so I'm going to just to leave it let it boil for you know vigorously for two three minutes and then that's it and then now i can smell the nice aroma in the entire room you see of the pandan i'm going to drop this uh, lime leaves now and then i'm going to add the sugar i'm going to use the brown the, the white crystal sugar drop sugar as you see it and i don't add too much sugar you see So let it boil uh, three, four minutes, as I said, and then you know to really extract the flavor, the aroma from those herbs, from the toast ginger, pandan, lemongrass, and uh, lime leaves. So that's it. So it's such a refreshing aroma. So that's our first tea. So the second tea, herbal tea that I'm going to make is our famous uh, lemongrass tea. Lemongrass tea. Uh, well, to tell you the truth, lemongrass tea is not so popular in Malaysia. But I've discovered this for a long time. And I've been making this for the last 20 over years, you see. So the main ingredient of course is lemongrass. I have lemongrass, but I used to make it just with lemongrass. But these few years, I, I add a pandan to it. So to give the nice aroma of the pandan in lemongrass, uh, it's such a, a pleasant uh, taste and pleasant aroma. But then you know, in our neighboring country, uh, in Thailand, they do sell this tea in the dry form, you see. They would like cut this you know, very finely and then also the pandan and then you dry it and becomes a pandan and uh, lemongrass tea. And you just can like put in a cup and then pour the boil, hot boiling water and then leave it for a few minutes and then you can drain it. You see? And also you can make it at home as well. So you just slice it thinly and then both of them and then dry it. Or you can use a dehydrator at home, you see. So you can have instant tea yeah. or make instant tea at home but now make it fresh so i'm going to uh, slice it roughly also you know like if you have as i said you can just press it to you know to 
release the essential oil in the diamond uh, glass, you see. And I will use the whole thing, you see. And I also use to put the lime, uh, the lemongrass leaves as well. So I'm just going to put this in the water and the panda. So this is totally different flavor, yeah, because you will uh, taste a lot of this uh, lemongrass taste in the panda, and it just blends so good. It's very refreshing. What I normally do is that I would uh, prepare this in a like three, four liters like that, and then use it and I keep it in the fridge and drink it cold. And it's very uh, refreshing, as I said, and it would help you know to to, to refresh you and let's say you are so tired and this one you know this tea would help you to refresh yourself. And I'm going to use brown sugar this time to give some color to the tea. And I don't add too much sugar. I you know I don't make my tea too sweet, you see. I like it to be like like very subtle, not too overly sweet, you see. Okay. Again the same thing, just boil it, you know like from the boiling point, uh, not more than five minutes. Four or five minutes is fine. Not too long. But then, if you have a lot, you make a lot for five minutes. So you want to keep it boiling longer because it's a lot of water. You see, you want to extract all the uh, aromas or you know the properties from the herbs, lemongrass and the pandan. So, okay. So I'm just going to remove it from the heat, and then that's it. That's our second tea, pandan and lemongrass tea. Next, I'm going to show you how to make a uh, ginger tea with pandan. So that's our number three herbal tea this afternoon. So again. Very simple, just two ingredients are ginger and pandan. And you know, there are many ways that you can do ginger tea. Uh, you just can boil ginger and add brown sugar. That's you know, that's how it is used to be made, you know, uh, commonly. But then today, uh, I learned how to make this special tea, ginger tea and pandan. From my aunt, uh, we don't use uh, brown sugar, but we just use the crystal rock sugar. So I have a few pieces of ginger, and ginger is good for if you have airs in your body, you know, it helps to remove all those airs, and you feel better. Then I have just like three, four pieces of ginger. I don't even peel the ginger; you don't have to. After killing the, you know the skin nicely so you just can cut it and then put in the water and it, you know for the because I have a small part so I have to cut it in small pieces or you can just tie the pandan as a normal way and drop the pandan just like that so that's our ginger and the pandan tea And all this tea that I'm showing you this afternoon is going to have a different flavor, you see. And you can practice that in your daily life. It's good. This, you know, herbal drink is always good for detox. I'm going to use this crystal white sugar or rock sugar. That's it. So basically, the tea is going to be just white but you can taste the ginger flavor. This one you can wait like seven to eight minutes after boiling because you really want the, uh, the taste, the, the ginger to be extracted in the water, you see.
If it's too short, you won't be able to taste the ginger flavor. Instead of ginger, you will drink like pandan herbal tea. So you want them the ginger and pandan to be you know blend together and make a nice uh, flavor, nice tea. And the ginger tea, you know, all this tea can be served, it's especially good to be served during the Ramadan, you know, for the fasting. That's the tea for, for your breaking fast, before you drink other, or eat other things, you see. So it's a good start. Also, you can serve it during, you know, when you have guests at home. You know, herbal tea from, you know, from your backyard, that'd be interesting. Totally different smell of the pandan and ginger. It has a very unique aroma and taste. Okay, I think that's almost done. To remove it from the heat and make the next tea. show you how to make a how do you boil this bunga uh, kalam I just can't remember the English name for bunga kalam it's what we call this, this uh, butterfly yeah butterfly pea flower that's the right name uh, excuse me pardon me, my uh, forgetfulness of this name of this bunga kalam or butterfly pea flower and there are two types that I want to share with you uh, that I have both types one type is this one petal the other type with many many petals is like huge the one that I have here is those with many petals and it is kind of like huge you know the flower is big then the one that's the one petal like that you see so I dry them at home I always pick them early morning and then I dry them the whole day and then it'll be ready by the uh, late evening, you know, when there's sunset by sunset and then I can use it. And how do I keep this long? After drying it, you have to keep it dry, very, very dry. Uh, if not, you know, it would be moldy if you leave it in the room temperature or if you keep it in a bottle. So it has to be very dry, dry and crisp. Then it's good. And what I did, I would freeze it, pack it in a paper bag or plastic bag or ziplock like that, and then it would last months, in fact years, in your freezer. And I always have this supply at home, a lot of them. So I normally boil this water and then just drop a bunch of this like, uh, at that make the tea right so first I'm going to make this uh, blue tea flower just by itself yeah and later you can drink it you know like this uh, I by pea tea flower uh, just by itself or you can add other herbs as well that I'm going to show you and the you know, to drink it by itself is also very good. And this tea is very, would help you uh, to sleep if you take it at night. It would really help you, you know, to relax yourself, to uh, reduce your stress. And also most importantly, is it has a lot of anti-aging properties. So if you want to look young, forever young, you can practice drinking this tea a uh, few times a week, yeah? So it's boiling and it's so blue, you see? Okay, 
okay, that's that. I will like take that one first. I will remove the uh, this T. That's ready. Ready to be served. And uh, you, you see, I don't put sugar. You can put sugar when uh, you want to serve this, or you can add it before drinking the tea. I don't take it while it's still hot. I will make it look warm first. Yeah, which is better. I'm going to leave it here. That's our butterfly tea. And now I'm going to continue boiling the same a pot of tea, add some water to it. Bring to another bowl. And I will add down the money. Down the money also has a lot of anti-aging properties. So these two blend so well. And what I do normally, I'll pick the young, the, the only the young shoots, yeah? Not the old one. Just drop it in the pot and then. Not too many because if uh, not too many leaves, because if too many, they need to be very bitter. Just a few of them. That's it. Yeah. So this is like, uh, what do you call this? Uh, butterfly pea and lemony leaves together. You also can add, if you like, uh, the uh, coffee lime leaves or limacoro. Also, you can add, if you don't add the limoni, you see. If you don't want to have too many flavors in the tea, just two or three would be sufficient. So that you can taste the real taste of the tea or whatever herbs that you're adding to the tea, you see. Uh, so it's already boiling. That's it. Very fast. So, so this is another cup of tea, the bungatalang and the lemoni, right? It's because I use a lot of flour, I'm very generous in using this bungatalang, you see, a lot. And bungatalang, uh, magically, has no flavor, it's very natural, you know what I mean? So you can infuse any flavor to this bungatalam. So that's very unique of this bungatalam. We have different version now. Now I'm going to make another version of still bungatalam. I'm still going to use the tea from bungatalam, but I will add uh, lime to it. So then the color will change, you'll see. Later. So this is just imagine this is just uh, bunga talam tea without the lemon yeah? because I have it, so I don't want to boil it separately. I should have taken it earlier just now, but it's okay. That's that. So I have this with. I'm going to cut this later. Add this uh, calamansi. Calamansi also is very good. It has a lot of great properties that can I can imagine. You see, you just can squeeze this early morning and then uh, two or three of this, and then drink it and then mix it with water or honey, which is very good for your stomach and a lot of you know goodness in this calamansi. Basically, you know this calamansi and lemon of this will balance your uh, pH in your stomach. You don't want your stomach to be uh, acidic, but you want it to be uh, alkaline, you see, so that you will feel very healthy. And finally, I'm going to show you what you call this uh, aloe vera. And aloe vera, I'm so glad to share with you. And this aloe vera, comes from my backyard as well but in my home here actually but also have it in Malacca too it's originally from Malacca so you know 
But then, uh, with this, I'm here, but I also have a few parts of it. A lot of this aloe vera, and I've been keeping this, you know, aloe vera, if you have one aloe vera of this size, I got this, uh, the baby aloe vera, many years ago from Penang. A, you know, a Chinese guy uh, from this Penang tea house, uh, he, he, grew, you know, he grows a lot of this aloe vera in front of the shops in Penang, and I stopped by at the shops, and we became friends, you know, and then before I left Penang that time, uh, I got a few baby aloe vera, and I've been growing it for this aloe vera all these years. And aloe vera has a lot of health benefits, you see. Uh, would, of course, uh, would help in your, in cleansing your stomach, your tummy. Uh, no medicine, nothing, just by this. So, what I did, I already cleaned the aloe vera earlier, but normally what you did, you do was, well, is, you have to remove the, the thorn on the east sides of the aloe vera before peeling this. So, I would normally cut into two, and then use this peeler to just go like that. So, I would remove the, the you know, the sharp thorns, on the edges like that and then just peel it from top to down top to down and I also like to do it on a tray on a you know like a square tray and here I'm using a, a tray oval tray and then just press it and of course I have to wear gloves then remove it so after you after peeling the aloe vera you have to wash it under running water a bit to remove the gel of the aloe vera it will be difficult for you to cut it so I will cut it like lengthwise, uh, vertical, like this vertical, on a clean, on a clean, uh, on a clean, uh, we call this chopping board. I will cut it lengthwise after peeling it, and then cut it uh, this way. So I got this aloe vera, aloe vera cubes. That is ready, you see. Can you see it? Aloe vera very clearly. So I got the cubes of this aloe vera. And with these cubes, you know, these beautiful cubes, I always like have this in my fridge. Uh, what I do is I will mix with my syrup. Uh, you make you make syrup mera or, or orange juice, whatever juice you have. Then you add to your uh, beverage, you see, it becomes like a, like what do you call this, like a, a jelly, you know, aloe vera jelly, a natural aloe vera jelly in your beverage. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put this in the, this glass over here. I'm going to prepare a simple drink from this. This is what I used to do as well at home. And I will add honey to it, a bit of honey, of course you use natural honey here, yeah? and add some water, so it becomes like a lot of honey drink, yeah, then you stir it, give it a quick stir, if it's like you like to put ice, you can put it in. There you go. Aloe vera honey drink. Uh, just like that. You see. You can just drink it like that. Or you can keep it, you know, like serve it with ice if you like to serve it cold. So, there you go. I have so many tea. Let me assemble all this and then we will talk about each of the tea that what I have made today. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've made uh, six, seven types of tea, herbal tea and beverages, you know, this is like beverage, also can be considered as tea as well. So, well, first I made this uh, toish ginger tea with pandan and lemongrass and lime leaves. So, there you go, that's the first one. Second, I made the lemongrass and pandan tea 
That was the second one. And third, I made pan ginger and pandan tea. Fourth, I made the blue ginger uh, butterfly pea tea. This by itself, I boil the uh, water and then add the petals of the dry uh, butterfly pea tea. Butterfly pea. You know, for the bunga tala or butterfly pea, you also can use the fresh flowers and just drop it in the boiling water and then also becomes, you know, the tea as well. So the color is still the same color you're going to get. Why I dry it? Because you know, you cannot get fresh every day, but I can get fresh petals every day. But I still need the dry one as well, you see. I can bring them to my travel, for example. And next, I boil the tea, the bunga talam, with daun lemoni. That's another version of the uh, bunga talam tea. And then, next, this is the uh, bunga talam by itself. By later, we add this calamansi or lima kasturi. And finally, I have this aloe vera and honey drinks, which is very refreshing and it's very healthy. Let's say you know you, you know you don't feel well, you can take this tea, uh, this beverage, you see. And finally, I'm going to show you how this line is going to change the color of the butterfly tea. Going to squeeze this. Hopefully, it change the purple. That is changing to purple now, as you can see. Yeah, so it's like magic here. So there you go. It's kind of dark purple. You see, it's kind of dark purple because I use also. But here you can see the purple. Yeah, it's purple. So it's changed to purple. And you can drink this with uh, with honey, with the rock sugar, as you like, you see. And it gives more flavor to your uh, tea or tea beverage. So with that, I hope you all can try this at home and then, you know, pick anything, any herbs that you can use in your beverage. And of course, going to help you in your, you know, with your uh, bodily functions, you see, anti-aging, antioxidant, helping to cleanse your body with aloe vera. So start growing this aloe vera, it's very, very helpful, you see, in your daily lives. So with that, thank you for watching. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Chai, for your presentation and for that video. I'm personally really looking forward to trying the bunga kantan tea. I had no idea that you could boil that and drink it. I've only ever had it in nasi ulam, to be honest. Yes, you can. Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure it's absolutely delicious. Okay, thank you so much for that. And I can see that we've had quite a few questions already, and that you've been answering them in the chat as well in the Q and A box. So just to make sure some of them are not missed, we had someone ask about does brewing calamansi and lemon, with, oh, does boiling calamansi uh, and lemon get rid of the vitamin C? And you had advised to just use hot water or even warm water is fine. Yeah, for, for that. Besides that, uh, better to use old or young ginger. What was your response for that, uh, Professor Dr. Sharim? I'm also looking for that in the, in the chat. Well, that you can use, you know, you can use uh, young or old, but I typically like to use the old ones because, you know, then the flavor will be like strong flavors, you see. But then, you know, young gingers normally is used for, uh, for stir fry, you know, they will use young ginger or if you want to slice it, or you want to make it like uh, sides for the food, you know, they will, they will use young ginger. Right. But, you know, they typically both wanted, can be used. Yeah. Mm. Both can be used, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. 
Um, thank you for that, Professor Al-Sharim. Another question that I'm seeing just pop up here. Does using rock sugar, honey, or white sugar affect the flavor of herbal tea? Well, you know, I like to use rock sugar all in my herbal tea, you know, rock sugar or honey. But if you use honey, you don't have to boil. You just drop the honey in your, you know, in your tea like that. Because, you know, I like it because it's pure. It's not, you know, it's like a, a pure sugar, or how should I say, it's like original sugar than the, you know, the white sugar. And uh, of course, you know, if you like, don't put so much of the sugar, it will not be so sweet. And I can feel the difference of this rock sugar and the white sugar. Rock sugar, you know, is not as sweet as the uh, normal sugar. That, that's what I can tell you. Right. Okay, thank you for that, Professor Dr. Sherry. Uh, another question popping up. We've got quite a few here, so I'm just I'm going to go through them as quickly as I can so that everyone gets a response from you. Um, the next question is, what is your opinion on cold brew tea? Which one is better, hot or cold? Well, you know, it depends because, you know, some tea, or when you're dealing with tea leaves or herbs, some of them, you know, got to be like, got to be in, infused in hot water to extract the properties. If not, you know, it won't, it won't release the properties. So you will not drink, you know, all the goodness in the tea, you see. But then, you know, if you want to cool the tea, of course, you're going to brew it first and then you, you leave it cold in the fridge like that. Then, okay, you know, you can, you can still have the, the, you know, the properties, the good properties of, from the tea like that. Yes, or you can add ice cubes to it after yeah, it is, exactly. right? That's, exactly, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. We have some other questions here that you have answered, but just to make sure you know, no one else misses it. Someone had asked, um, how, do we exp how do we brew frangipani flowers? Uh, so that is just pouring hot water on the flower, wait for three to four minutes and then enjoy. I also had no idea that you could uh, drink frangipani actually. So this, <laughs> this was a great session for me. Um, another question was, many people believe that herbal teas should be bitter and dark. Can you suggest any way to convince and change that perception? So Professor Dr. Sharon, you had uh, responded that it really depends on what kinds of herbs you're using. Some of them could be particularly bitter. I believe Dr. Uh, Professor Dr. Shaim Daun Lemuni is quite bitter, right? Yeah, bitter, yes, bitter. So you don't use too much, you know, just a few shoots will be enough. Then it will be just pleasant to the taste. If not, you know, it's so bitter and so, not so nice. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And another question was talking about the, what we can do to make local herbs more popular and, and commonly found in supermarket shelves in Malaysia. And you had said that actually we don't have sufficient raw materials in the country. That's why we can't find them in the, in the market. So this is, you're, you're really referring to there not being enough um, nurseries herbs. and farms yeah. and, and herbs. herbs yeah, exactly, that yes, are yes. That's why, you know, we, we don't see them much, you know, in the market, you see. Uh, but then, you know, we uh, we import some from Thailand, you know, some of these uh, like herbs, you know, dry herbs like that, or Indonesia. Yes, I do recall uh, from Thailand in particular, uh, you can see all sorts of these dried herbs, exactly. even, yes, you know, yes. and, and they package it really nicely exactly. as well. I mean, mm -hmm. hope, mm -hmm. hope Malaysia will, will be able to do that sometime soon too. Okay, another question we have, I have marigold and passion fruit flowers in my garden can those be made into a tea as well yes sure yes you can dry them and then make into nice tea especially the passion fruit flowers uh tea you see it's nice flavor i yet to have my passion fruit uh, tree to you know to to bloom soon so i'm going to make tea as well and so you can mix fruit, yeah. oh, yes but I mean, you can mix with other flowers as well or other herbs, you know, as I, you know, as I shown just now on the slides, I mix a few, a few, you know, I make, mix uh, flower, dry flowers fresh and also the spices as well. Yes, with the cardamom you yeah. had mentioned, mm -hmm. yeah. So for passion fruit, 
uh, tea. So do you, are you using the flowers? Are you using the leaves and you're just boiling them for a little while? The flowers, the flowers. You pick oh, the, the flowers, flowers and, you, okay. and you can dry them, you know, or you can make them with fresh tea. We're using the fresh flowers. Yeah. But then, you know, if you pick the tea, then you would not have the, uh, the fruit or you just take the petals and you can leave the baby fruit, you know, right? because the fruit is in the middle of the flowers, you see. Or the flower drops, then you can pick the flowers. I see. Mm. Yes, my passion fruit tree is is growing quite a bit, so I'm also eager to try this. Thank you for that question. All right, I think we have a few a few more minutes for maybe two to three more quick questions. Uh, another one I I had collected over here was um, jamu. Um, this concoction of of many types of herbs and I think even spices. I wanted to ask you to maybe tell us a little, little bit more about, about what jamu is, really. Yeah, well, jamu, you know, our grand, my grandmothers that I know, they, she used to go into the forest and pick different roots of you know, roots and different barks from different trees and you mix it together and then boil. You know, she would boil this and make it into concussion as you said and it's good for you know for women after giving birth or good for hypertension good for diabetic you know and then it's a different mix of different uh, herbs and spices that she found in the forest but now you know of course our forest is a big huge pharmacy out there you see there's so many many like kazana for our country but then you know like we have to really get into this and experience it and we know if not it could be poisonous you know if you don't know some kind of tree would be poison you know could be poison and you die from it you see so you need to have the knowledge in order to pick all those roots or leaves in the forest okay. right and what is the typical uh typical few ingredients that uh, is usually used for making jamu i know there's involved yes there's kunyi there's temulawa you know sometimes they would add oh no but then you know they make the jamu jamu is always in dry form you see dry form is like they would use the leaves or the bark or the roots and also it would be pounded into powdered and make into you know small balls like that or uh it just i mean so different forms yeah dry forms and then uh of the whole herbs or the whole, uh, the whole, you know, like the barks or uh, the uh, roots or powdered, and it can be boiled, you see. If it's like powdered, then you make it into like small ball and then you just take it like that. Or if it's in powder form, you mix with water and you would take it. But then it's, you know, it kind of bitter and very strong aromas, you see. So it's sometimes it's difficult for people to take jamu uh, straight like that. So it's, you know, I mean, herbal tea is more subtle, but jamu is stronger like that. And of course, jamu, you know, we are, we are basically, I think in Malaysia, we're not so much a jamu taker, you know, practicing jamu or anything, but still, we still have. But Indonesia is big in jamu. And they have, you know, a big jamu industry because they have all those herbs that they are using in making the jamu. I see. Yes. Okay, thank you for that. I, I have heard so many different stories about Jammu, so it's nice to be able to <laughs> get a clearer picture of it. Okay, so we have two more questions here, which we can uh, round off with. So what other combinations can we use for herbal teas? So such as cinnamon or rose petals, any any particular combinations you would recommend, Professor Dr. Sharim? Well, you know, if I, you know, I would not use rose petal and cinnamon because, you know, rose petal, I would use it by itself. I would just take, I would just take a dry or fresh rose and pour hot water into it and then drink it. But then you put cinnamon, cinnamon is very strong. Then it would take over the, you know, the fragrance of the rose. Then, you know, you'd be like cinnamon tea, you see. Uh, you can mix cinnamon with hibiscus, you know, hibiscus or what do you call this, this, uh, Hibiscus, or uh, I, I just can't remember this fruit. Uh, hibiscus, no, I mean it's not hibiscus flower, but it's hibiscus, hibiscus, hibiscus uh, fruit. What do you call? Is it the roselle? 
Oh yeah, Roselle, Roselle, yeah, Roselle. You know, some other countries they call it hibiscus, but it's not really hibiscus. It's Roselle, I say. But but Roselle and uh, and cinnamon would be good combination. And also, you also can do tea from the hibiscus flower, but you need to remove the what do you call it, the stigma, or the the you know the uh, what should I say the you know that bunga raya you know that's uh, like uh, the top part. You have to remove it, and you but then you dry. It. Then you have to dry the petals, and you can make into tea. Not the, you know, we call it stigma. I, I don't know what it's called in English, <laughs> but anyway, there's one more question there, frangipani and plumeria. Well, friend, I have drink, I have drank both of this frangipani and plumeria, the red plumeria. I'm still here. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't get poisonous or anything. You see. Uh, you have to try them. Yeah, Roselle, Roselle. Thank you, Z, Z Yun Chia. Yeah, I just, you know, it didn't click my mind, this Roselle thing. I confused with hibiscus. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for all your questions. And if you do have any other burning questions you would like to ask about herbal tea or anything to do with herbs, please do um, get in touch with Professor Dr. Sharim. His Instagram handle is over here on the screen and he will definitely be responding to you. Thank you very much, everyone. Professor Dr. Sharim, thank you so much for joining us today. That was such a great, fun presentation. Really can't wait to try all of these teas. Any sort of wrap up last words from yourself? Yes. Thank you so much, Delima, for moderating the event. And I'm so grateful to, uh, to be sharing all this uh, herbal tea with you all and try to do something at home with the herbs or the flowers that you have. And I'm sure you're going to have fun and you're going to benefit from it. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dr. Sharim. And thank you very much to Banawar Malaysia for hosting this session and for organizing it. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us on this Saturday afternoon. It has been such a pleasure and privilege to be here. I will pass over to Banawar Malaysia now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Delima, for being such a wonderful, charming and engaging moderator for us. We really appreciate your time for volunteering to do this for us. Thank you so much again, Delima. Professor Dr. Sharif, thank you so much for sharing with us your knowledge and for your time and the expertise in teaching us more about how to appreciate um, herbal teas, that, especially using local herbs. I think that's just really brilliant. Thank with you, thank you. My pleasure. My so pleasure. on behalf of Badan Waris and Malaysia, we would like to thank again Delima and Professor Dr. Sharim. And thank you everyone for joining us today in our session and for listening in. Um, Badan Waris and Malaysia, we are a NGO and we rely on donations from the public to keep our operations going. We, we, we do not receive any financial uh, assistance from the government. So if you would like to donate to us, the details are there on the screen. Uh, please follow us on our social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and that's also the uh, website address. Um, thank you again so much for everyone for, your, for, your, for spending time with us this afternoon. And we would like to wish you a very wonderful weekend ahead. Thank you.